United's first trip abroad this season came on the successful tour of Ireland, games against Shelbourne in Dublin and Dundalk right on the border. Traditionally, United have always had a wonderful following here, and the welcome this time round was nothing short of amazing. Manchester United have done very well out of Ireland, right through, going right back almost 50 years with Jackie Carey. Then in the 50s you had uh, Blanchflower, Noel Cantwell, right up to today with Irwin and, and Keane. I mean, Ireland has been a fertile ground for Manchester United. Right. They're paying their dues, I think, by coming here to let, let our supporters see them. So Matt Busby was the first manager to cull the talent from north and south of the border. Two of the great men of scouting were employed to uncover the best young players available. Players like Johnny Carey, captain in the 48 Cup final, and Busby Babe, Liam Whelan. I'd say Manchester United were probably the only team to be scouting Northern at that time. Nobody else really bothered, you know. And Manchester got so many good players from the Republic, everybody else decided that maybe they should be over here as well. I'd say every English League club now has a representative in, in the Republic. But the flow to United has been rich and profitable from North and South. Great names, great goals. What a great goal, George Best and And Daly making a good break on the return and scoring a tremendous goal. We've got a second bite at it, white side. Oh, they're flying in now. We had a bit of a skinhead, um, duffel coat, Doc Martin boots on, and travelling first class over to Manchester every week with these business people. And what did they think when they saw you? I don't know, they must have thought it was carrying drugs or something. <laughs> David May and Lee Sharp had joined up for the Dundalk game, though Roy Keane and Dennis Irwin were still resting. <laughs> That's great, eh, manager? That's what he's I love it, I love it. <laughs> the game was a sellout, of course, and it could just about sell anything you wanted. United appeal to everybody, young and old, boy and girl. Who's your favourite? A full house for the benefit of testimonial man Gino Lawless. I'd be surprised if I see a, a black and white shirt out there today. You know. Yeah, that's the way it is right to work. Um, they were over the last, last um, 92 they came over and we played in Lansdowne for the Republic and it was just red and white, not a green and white scarf in it. So that's the, that's the sort of pulling power they have in Ireland. And it wasn't all friendly as Dundalk went two up before United finally found the gear. And here's a gap in the United defence and a goal as well. Tony Loughlin. Loughlin has played well and the space over to the right hand side and there's two men coming in on it. Burn is one of them. There's no flag and Pat Moore has a second. Here's Cantona. Giggs, great touch. Kanchelskis. Only got Hughes to aim at. That's where the ball's gone, and he's got there. Might have been a combination of defender and Hughes. And if I was betting, I would say that came off the defender last. McClare. Ince. McClare. And still, Cantona's at the near. There's Cantona. There's Kanchelskis. Got it all wrong. Here's Paul Ince. And he tumbles and it's a penalty. Well, he was trying to ride the challenge. The leg came up and Ince fell over it. So inside the first two minutes of the second half, the penalty king has a chance to do what he does best from the spot. And he's failed. Well, you can't believe it, can you? Now here's Ryan Giggs from the right hand side all the way to the left. And Lawless has made a thumping challenge. But the ball's still broken for United. Here's Ince. Lee Sharp. He's done well. Ince lines up the shot and smashes it home. What a great finish that was. 
flag's gone up. Referee hasn't seen it, but uh, it made little difference on that occasion. Here's Int. No offside flag. Eric Cantona, 3-2 chance now. And now still squares it unselfishly. Mark Hughes makes it 3-2. Hughes. Lovely touch. Ryan Giggs. 14. When he, the penalty was given and he stepped up and took the ball out of me. I was going to ask him to bet my £100, but I said, no, just in case he, he does score, I won't. But uh, I regret it after, and now that I saved it, I didn't ask him for the £100. But I am delighted. It's a dream come true to save a penalty against a world class player like that. You know, it's, it's every skill boy's dream. As much as anything, it was a marvellous opportunity for the United players to greet the fans, especially those who couldn't make it to the games. At the Dublin Children's Hospital, they just popped in to say hello and they made a number of youngsters very, very happy. Well, I was just watching the, 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 on the, the last ward, I mean, those kids are only eight or nine, and uh, the nurses were asking who they were, you know, who, wh what players they were, and the kids were able to rattle off the names, no, no problem. And the pronunciation's very good too. <laughs> Back at the hotel, it was United Mania all over again. Signing sessions for waiting fans, most of them young ladies. There's a magic about Manchester United that stretches far beyond the boundaries of Manchester. The tour was already a major success. The following day, the Irish branch of the United Supporters Association got together before the game with Shelbourne just to have a ball. During the season, my phone never stops. People wanted to go on trips and the much of the cars, where are you staying? I want to see Man U all the time. And now for them want to bring their kids over, as I say, particularly just to meet the players, get an autograph on their arm, they won't watch their arm for a month. The most famous fan is one David Keogh, who's been just about everywhere. Say hello to him on your travels this season. You're more famous than Ryan Giggs. <laughs> <laughs> but if this is happening, you fan club behind me here, and I'm not going to. No surprise then that there was another full house at Shelbourne, a wonderful occasion in wonderful weather. And no missing Davy. His flag was there all right for all to see. But no messing around this time from United. It was business straight from the kickoff. Kicks his corner. Great header from Ince. And it just flew by the upright. It's a lovely warm afternoon now here in Dublin. And this crowd would love to see a goal, and they've got one! And I've been talking about Paul Ince's heading ability, and he's come up with the goods, and it's the famous celebration. Cantona. Lovely ball, Mark Hughes, it's opened up for him, he's got the strength, he's brought down. Is it inside? Surely it was. Yeah, penalty. It was only a matter of where the referee decided that the challenge took place. And it was always going to be inside the box. Now, Eric Cantona, the penalty king, who was dethroned on Saturday at Dundalk by Eddie Van Boxtel. Confident enough to put that penalty miss behind him. Won't be wanting to miss this one won't be missing this one. Good ball, Giggs. Time for McClare, sizes up the chip and hits the bar. Great effort Brian McClare. Sized up the opportunities and eventually the ball reaches Hughes and he's hit the same part of the bar that McClare did. Well, I think they're playing crossbars. Gillespie. Casper. Ince. Casper again. Gillespie again. Ince. This is super stuff from United. Hughes. Still. Cantona. This could be a glorious goal if it's got the right finish. And boy, it has. Well, that 
that went back all the way to the right fullback position. What a magnificent goal that was. There were kisses all round at Shelbourne, but surely this is a first. How to get your man in a corner? Watch the body swerve round the steward. Neat footwork and a kiss that can't miss. Mum, you'd never guess what I just did today. But then these days it's more than just football with Manchester United, the most famous football team around.